the scene seems so joyful. Video of SeaWorld trainer Dawn Brancho performing with Tilikum, a spectacular killer whale. She feeds him, plays with him, bonds with him as they lie down together in shallow water. And then something goes terribly wrong. This whale grabbed her, pulled her in the water. Tilikum, the 12,000 pound, 22 foot long killer whale, kills the 40 year old trainer, igniting a controversy that's still playing out today. I didn't understand why a killer whale would essentially bite the hand that feeds it. She was, you know, his trainer. So, you know, presume that they had this loving bond. Gabriella Copperthwaite is a filmmaker whose latest documentary, Blackfish, examines just how Tillicum and Branchow arrived at that fateful moment three years ago and raises the question, should killer whales be held in captivity? One of the things that shocked me the most was how violent and prolonged it was. That is the stuff of nightmares. Brancho's death was particularly shocking because she was one of the most gifted and experienced trainers at SeaWorld. Dawn was the poster child for SeaWorld. She's beautiful. She's blonde. More than all of that, she was a top, top trainer. But should this incident have been a surprise? There have been four deaths involving killer whales in captivity, and Tilikum has been associated with three of them. For someone who's never met him and ever spent any time with him, how would you describe him? Uh, well, I always thought Tilikum was a real puppy dog. It kind of shows you how naive I, I was. Tilikum is the patriarch of roughly half of all the killer whales at SeaWorld Parks. He's a crowd favorite. What is the lore that causes people to just fall in love with these animals? They're such impressive animals to look at, the capacity of those animals, the intelligence. When you look into their eyes, you know somebody is home. They're spectacular. In the wild, the animals live in rich, tightly bound communities. They live in these big families, and they have lifespans very similar to human lifespans, but the adult offspring never leave their mother's side. Is it true that killer whales have never been responsible for loss of life in the wild? This is a true. A human life. This is true. There's no um, documented case of a killer whale ever killing uh, anybody in the wild. It's only in captivity where these incidents have happened. Copperthwaite traces what she calls a 40-year experiment back to the beginning. It was a really exciting thing to do until everybody wanted to do it. The hunts from more than 40 years ago to capture the first killer whales for the first marine parks. They had speed boats, they had bombs they were throwing in the water. They herd the whales into coves. The animal's intelligence was readily apparent. The adults without young went east into a cul-de-sac, and the boats followed them, thinking they were all going that way, while the mothers with babies went north. But the capture teams had aircraft, and they have to come up for air eventually, and when they did, the capture teams alerted the boats, and they had fishing boats with seine nets that they would stretch across so none could leave, and then they could just pick out the young ones. The hunt separated young killer whales from their mothers, destroying their social connections. This is the worst thing that I've ever done. When he was about two years old, Tillicum was captured off the coast of Iceland in 1983. You know, he's sort of taken from his mother at this very young age. And then he's dumped in this park called Sealand of the Pacific and is beat up on consistently. At night, Tillicum and the two other killer whales were kept in a holding pen just 20 feet across and 30 feet deep. They were immobile for the most part. It didn't feel good. It just didn't. Closing that door on him and knowing that he's locked in there for the whole night is like, it's a staff, it's a, whoa. It was at Sealand of the Pacific in 1991 that Tillicum was responsible for the death of a trainer for the first time. The whale grabbed her back foot and pulled her under. It was the very next year that Tillicum arrived at SeaWorld in Orlando to the delight of tourists who knew nothing about his past. But in 1999, a second death when a park visitor managed to stay after the park closed. What happened next is unclear. The next morning, he was found draped across Tillicum's back, dead from hypothermia. 
It's not known what role, if any, Tillicum played in his death. But fatalities aren't the only concern. The very behavior of a killer whale isn't 100% predictable. From 1988 to 2009, before Don Brancho's death, SeaWorld generated 100 incident reports of killer whales engaging in undesirable behavior, including nearly a dozen that involved injuries to trainers. Swimming with 8,000 pound killer whales, as a human being, our bodies are not designed to do that. But then you would also have injuries related to aggression with the whales for sure. In one incident, the trainer made the mistake of putting her foot on and off a killer whale. Watching the video, knowing Orchid, your stomach drops because you know what's probably going to happen. She grabbed her foot. You see her just ripped from the gate. You hear her just scream out, somebody help me. The trainer was eventually released, but not before having her arm badly broken. She's very lucky to be alive, that's for sure. Tragically, Dawn Brancho did not have a similar outcome. She talked about her whole life. She knew she wanted to work with the animals, and SeaWorld was her dream. We embarked on this sort of 40-year experiment here, the Marine Park experiment. But I think the results of this 40-year experiment are that um, we can just never, ever truly give them what they need and that it's actually very dangerous for us to try. The government agreed. In the wake of Brancho's death, OSHA undertook an investigation of the incident and ordered SeaWorld to keep trainers further away from killer whales, even placing them behind barriers, ending the intimate and dramatic acrobatic work that once thrilled audiences. SeaWorld continues to appeal the decision and says OSHA has a fundamental misunderstanding of how to properly and safely care for and work around these animals. SeaWorld says they were deeply saddened by the death of Brancho and that since 2010, the company has voluntarily implemented significant changes to the training protocols for its killer whale program that have proven to be safe and effective. SeaWorld believes that marine parks play a crucial role in society. Displaying marine mammals like killer whales provides an invaluable educational resource to the public. They point out that 11 million people visit SeaWorld parks each year, and they hope each leaves with a greater understanding of these remarkable animals and the challenges they face in an increasingly imperiled marine environment. Even Copperthwaite says she doesn't want to see SeaWorld close down, just change. I think that they have uh, the financial resources to be able to sort of shift this whole marine park circus-like environment uh, into one of education. With summer's arrival, thousands of visitors will be coming to SeaWorld in Orlando, thrilled at the sight of Tillicum performing in captivity, as he has for the past 21 years. We need SO to respond for a dead person at SeaWorld. A whale has eaten one of the trainers. The 911 call hinted at the horror. SeaWorld Orlando, February 2010. Tillicum, a 12,000 pound killer whale, drags trainer Don Branchow underwater and dismembers her. He never let go of the, uh, the arm. The arm. He swallowed it. He swallowed it. More than three years after that awful incident, a new documentary is out that looks into her death and questions SeaWorld operations. What happened to her really could have happened to anyone. Blackfish claims Branchow's death wasn't an isolated incident. The Tillicum was involved in the deaths of two other people before her, one prior to SeaWorld owning the whale. And it documents other frightening moments at SeaWorld involving different orcas. Both whales took turns dragging her under the water. It shows how dangerous it is. John Hargrove and Jeff Fentry are among the multiple former SeaWorld trainers who speak out in the film. They're accusing SeaWorld of putting profit ahead of trainer safety, and they now believe confining killer whales for a lifetime is cruel. Captivity definitely, without a doubt, increases the stress level of these animals, and stress leads to frustration. Frustration leads to aggression. We now know that they live in such strong nuclear families. To pull them out of that environment for human entertainment is basically old school. The film contains what it says is archival video of young orcas captured in the wild to populate SeaWorld. It's heartbreaking. Every time you see it, it just you know, tears your heart out. The film shows what it says are images of whales born in captivity at SeaWorld being forcibly separated from their mothers. Ex-trainer Carol Ray told me she saw it happen once and can't forget the mother's reaction. 
the screaming and crying that she did by herself in the pool that, that night. I cried on my way home. The filmmakers say SeaWorld declined repeated requests for an on-camera interview. Same for us at CNN, but in a lengthy statement provided, SeaWorld blasted the film as, quote, shamefully dishonest, deliberately misleading, and scientifically inaccurate. It goes on to say, quote, SeaWorld is proud of its legacy of supporting marine science and environmental awareness in general, and the cause of killer whales in particular. Killer whales are highly Director involved. Gabriella Cowperthwaite um, spent two years working on Blackfish. She believes it's time SeaWorld evolves their parks. Turn them into rehabilitation release centers, um, make sea pens where you can kind of cordon off part of the ocean cove and release whales into that so they can keep an eye on them. They could play a very heroic role in the future. I would hope that they would be in inspired to do that. into their eyes, you know somebody is home. They're an animal that possesses great spiritual power not to be meddled with. Orange County Sheriff's Office. We need SO to respond for a dead person at SeaWorld. A whale has eaten one of the trainers. Silicon though is the one that went after her. Don is the senior trainer here at Shamu Stadium. She captured what it means to be a SeaWorld trainer, that it made me realize what happened to her really could have happened to anyone. I've been expecting somebody to be killed by a Tilikum. We weren't told much about it, other than it was trainer error. It didn't just happen. It's not a singular event. You have to go back to understand this. The speedboat herded them in, and they could just pick out the young ones. This is the worst thing that I've ever done. When Tilikum arrived at SeaWorld, he was twice as large as the next animal. We stored these whales in what we call a module, which was 20 feet across and 30 feet deep, and the lights were all turned out. Probably led to what I think is a psychosis. in captivity are all psychologically traumatized. It's not just Tilikum. If you were in a bathtub for 25 years, don't you think you'd get a little psychotic? Dawn would tell you that it was her mistake. They blamed her. It's just a bold-faced lie. I was just instructed to get rid of the day. The industry has a vested interest in spinning these. That sells a lot of Shamu dolls. It sells a lot of tickets at the gate. There's no record of an orca doing any harm in the wild. 